TechSharp AI is another new feature inside of OM1 2023. Let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. And I've been playing around with it, so I just want to share some of my thoughts on how this works. Now, I do have to remind you, this is pre-release software. So there's things that are going to get better with the software over time. But just showing you what I've noticed so far. If I come back over here to the info, you see I shot this with my R6. And I was using the behemoth of the Tamron 150 to 600. Now, I was on a tripod, but this image, like if you zoom in, it's really just not that sharp. So in my opinion, this is a prime candidate to use the TacSharp AI software. So let's go ahead and jump into TacSharp AI. In order to find it, you're going to come over to the develop module and then you're going to click on noise and sharpening. So when you open that up, you're going to see four buttons across the top here. Obviously, we're on the classic, not what we're interested in, but then you have tax sharp AI. Now, I'm not going to go into it in this particular video. However, this button that says both is going to it's going to enable tax sharp AI and no noise AI. So if you're on a noisy image and you need to sharpen the image, then this is probably you're probably going to want to push both. All right. So we'll click on tax sharp AI. And what on one is going to do is render the image. You can see the loading bar down here at the bottom right of the image. And I'm in the film strip view. So let's get some more real estate. Uh, go ahead and make this a little bit larger. All right. So now we're looking at tax sharp AI and this is zoomed in to 100 percent. If you look at the top of the screen here, you can see it's at 100 percent. There's some artifacts that are going on, right? I know some people are going to say, see, tax sharp AI just doesn't work. And I'm not going to go there and say that. What I will say is you're going to have to control how this operates on your image and you're going to get different results on every image. And, you know, this is just one of those images that has a lot of texture in the same plane, seemingly of the main subject here. So you're going to see these artifacts all over the place. And if you stick around, I'm going to show you how to deal with that, or at least the way that I'm going to deal with it. Probably it definitely sharpened the image. If I drag this back to the right, you can see his eye and his face is just not sharp. But when I hover over it and actually apply the tag sharp, it does work. Now, I don't like the way that this looks on the body. So what I'm going to do is adjust the actual tack sharp AI D blur. I was going to say de blur. That doesn't sound good. Uh, so I like to start with it at 50% and because my computer was kind of skipping there, we're at 46. It's going to be the same. It's going to work pretty good, right? So as you can see, it's sharpening the eye here and the face and uh, this is the area that I want to have sharper or have more in focus, if you will. Uh, so I think that looks good. Now, here's the problem. And, you know, correct me in the comment section and, you know, maybe someone can tell me why we do this. But I'm zoomed in 100 percent. I don't view the image at 100 percent. Like if I print this, I'm not looking at this at 100 percent. I'm going to look at it at whatever the view is of the image or whatever, you know, the eight by 10, four by five or whatever dimensions. Right. So the way that I really like to use this is zoomed out and looking at it from the fit or how I would normally view this. Uh, and even this size of a uh, print um, is probably not as large as we're going to view it, because if we're on social media, we're probably going to view it somewhere more around this size. Like if we're just being honest. Right. Uh, and at this point, you know, can you tell that it's sharp or not? I don't think you can. Uh, but we'll come back to fit just to humor the fact that we're going to technically edit the image and. Uh, I'm kind of rambling here, but the point that I really want to make is understand why you're using a tool and what value that brings to your photography. If you know that sharpening an image is not really that important, then maybe this isn't the feature that you are the most 
uh, interested in. I, th- I still think that it's a good feature, so that's why I'm covering it. But uh, just understand what's happening uh, or when you would want to use a particular tool. I'm not a fan of what's happening to the body back here. So now I'm at fit and I can see the artifacts and I'm not a fan of that, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit done. Oh, don't hit done. So once you are satisfied with what you have, you want to click apply, not done because I clicked on done and that took some time. So don't make that mistake. I make it for you. So that way you don't have to. All right. Uh, now what I'm going to do is click on the duplicate layer icon. All right. Or duplicate layer, whatever it may be. Now that I have my duplicate layers and there's no tack sharp AI on the top layer, I can mask in the bottom layer of the tack sharp AI. All I have to do is click on the layer mask here. So now all we have to do is paint in the sharpening where we want it to actually be applied. So what I'm going to do is just remove the uh, image without the sharpening in the area of the face. But you see, I'm not getting those weird artifacts in the back of the body. So if I were to paint over that, you can see that kind of gets painted in. Um, hopefully that's coming through on the YouTube compression. But that's what I don't want. So what I'm going to do is hit the letter O and then I'm going to hit shift X. So that way I'm on the paint in and I'm just going to re replace this with the actual image that was already there. All right. Now I have a brush with a hundred percent feather. Uh, I recommend that you do this with a brush that does have a hundred percent feather. So that way you don't get like these weird jagged edges. Um, and now we'll go ahead and finish painting in this area with a smaller brush, just so that way I know that the entire face is in focus. All right. And there is how I would personally use tack sharp AI. To check out a video how I used to fix this without Tack Sharp AI inside of On One, click the video right here. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating.